Hey guys, welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. I'm Alex, that is Curvy. Today we're going to be talking about combining... <laughs> Curvy had to do his intro. <laughs> okay, today we're going to be talking about... <laughs> like DJ Clue? <laughs> today we're going to be talking about um, combining finances in marriage. Um, this is a huge one, guys. Um, now, keyword, marriage, not boyfriend, girlfriend. Uh, don't do that. Um, you know, if you guys are going 50 50, you know, living together, okay. But like combining finances when you are married is the biggest way to accelerate your growth, in my opinion, because two people working towards the same goal will achieve that goal much faster than one person, I believe. Um, I know Kirby and I, we both do this, but I'll let you start it off with what you do in your household. All right. So like you said, this ain't for baby mama and them. This ain't for shacking up. This is for married couples. And um, one thing that that's I cringe at every time I hear it, when I hear married couples say, oh, that's her money. That's his money. He spent it with her money. And I mean, it's cringeworthy. The only reason why it's cringeworthy is because I used to have that same mindset when uh, I jumped the broom. And I thought my my issues financially was my issues and you know, their issues, their issues. But the truth of it is, it's our issues because at the end of the day, if I'm short or she's short, then the other one got to come over the top. But I mean, me maturing and things like that made me realize that. But the, the key thing of it is, and the reason why I believe combining finances is essential is finances is the number one cause for divorce. And for anybody that's wondering or they don't give a damn what I say, but I believe the financial talk should happen way before the ideal of marriage even come up. I mean, I'm not hardcore as Alex. Alex probably saying, "No, first date we need to talk about finance." But, but, but <laughs> okay, by, that, by the third, no, that is true. By the third, <laughs> yeah, by the third date, oh uh, no, nah, no, nah, we we talk, we landed all on the line. I mean, I because the thing is, is if you bring in financial heart, heartache into my world or I'm bringing financial heartache into your world, then I already know that's the number one cause of divorce. So we can nip this in the bud now. We can go on about our separate ways because it ain't no sense of playing the, oh, I'm in love. And then next thing you know, they hit you with a whopper right before you about to walk down the aisle or after you walk down the aisle and you realize you're trapped in a whole bunch of mess of madness. And again, the number one reason for divorce is finances so that's that's how i view it balance i'll come back on the second round of it what you got so i was laughing because when my wife and i so i mean not not just considering you know my wife and i we used to go out as friends and stuff and then when we were dating literally our first date like she'll we'll pass by it was a longhorn so we'll pass by this longhorn and she was like that remember where when you interrogated me there because I was like, what are your goals? Why do you want to be like? I was like, how are your finances? Like, what this? These are my financial goals. I won't. I I, I remember I told her I was like, I am not willing to give up my goals for someone. I was like, I want to know right now if you're on board or you know we just stay being friends. But like, I was so dead on my goals, and then. Uh, there was a point in our relationship when she had some credit card debt and I was like on top of her. I was like, you need to pay it off. Like, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> you know, like every paycheck. I was like, how much do you have left? What's the remaining balance? Like every, like I was making sure it was paid off. And she like, she'll be like, really? Like, so to this day, she'll like, we'll laugh about it. But it was, man, I was, I was so serious about if I'm going to be committed to someone, we got to be on the same page financially but yeah I was and I was like I I, I didn't care it was like I know where I want to be in life I want to be financially successful I want to be free financially I don't want to be a slave to the lender to the nine to five you know lifestyle I want to break free break the matrix and so it was like I would do anything in my power to get out of that and that's you know I think people have that, that that's a tough conflict for them because you know, oh, they're they're in love and it's that puppy love or whatever. They no, I was like, dude, we're getting out of this. Like, so have those uh have those conversations. That is so important. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, when we were to, when we were just together, like boyfriend, girlfriend, yeah, it was just, um, you know, we split the rent, we split the light bill, we split food, like, so everything was divided, you know, but then once we were married, it was like, they were putting every, everything together. So now I will say like, um, everything is like under the same account. Right. But like we, there's like, mm -hmm. but it's like three accounts. So like under the same accounts, like my checking, her checking savings and like we, but it's under the same account. Um, so it's not like we just all put all one thing into one account. Um, and maybe that's just to divide it easier. Like, so it's like, sure. I'm not as much of a spender as maybe she is, but she isn't much of a spender either. So I'll just be like, Hey, take some money for, for <laughs> you know, do like, that. you'll order chilies and stuff. And I'm over here eating ramen, but you know, so like, I'll be like, take some, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, you know, take, take some money uh, from the paycheck and then, She'll be like, all right, take this much from the paycheck. So I'll take that and I'll put it into stocks. Um, and then like we have like another savings account, which is the ally account that's just for like high interest. And so that one is pretty much just like anytime I get Zelle transactions or whatever, it just stays there. And that's like an extra like fund for, you know, if I need to compensate for an investment, I'll just take out of that. But we keep everything on the same page i wouldn't say it all goes to the same account like the same one bank uh account but um we're all on the same page we know what our finances is we know what's coming in we know how much we have and we you know we first we pay ourselves first you know that that comes first and then uh bills are paid on the just about the very very last you know day that they need to be paid so um yeah, that is that is very important. Keeping keeping finances combined when while married, yes. Yeah, and and for me, it's it's a little bit different from how y'all dynamic is. Me, so you pay. So like you said, you pay the bills when it's uh the like, the day is due. Not me. I pay the bill soon as, I mean, no matter what for businesses or whatever. As soon as the bill show up, I pay it. So, okay. For, for just for instance, uh, for business in Texas, the bill comes on the first, but it's not due to the fifteenth. Soon, as I'm paying it on the first. I I get that out of the way, but that's business stuff. But so for us, it's and like I said, I live both sides. I thought, oh, you're supposed to have your sec your checking savings. She have her checking savings, and hers is hers, mine is mine, and we'd be like, okay, you got to pay this bill, you got to pay this bill. So you know maturing and evolving over time how it works for us is those same checking and savings accounts that we have they're still there i mean for whatever little pennies that's in there and then we have you know combined accounts uh, i forgot how many accounts we got but we got combined accounts for everything else so the money goes in it, it goes into the a combined account and then we set it up because for me i don't want so my wife puts money or you know we have agreed upon set upon dollar amount that we can have in our personal you know checking where we can just spend it you know without you know asking the other person and that's just to give them that freedom of you know if she want to go get her hair done nails done whatever i i don't want to see I, I don't have no hair so i don't want to see two three hundred dollars four hundred dollars on hair you know what i mean me it's you know about about 35 cents to shave this thing off. So seeing that, I don't want to see it. So, and then of course, she don't want to go, you know, me, you know, if I go to the bar or something, she don't want to see that either. So, but that's what we do just so, you know, it's, let's say penalty free money, you can go do whatever you want to go do with it, you know, give them that, you know, freedom. So we, we do that. And then, but like you said, paying, paying ourselves first, of course, you know, that's the thing investing paying myself first is the top line item on our budget uh and majority 80 percent of the money that we bring in it goes into that category of paying myself first and then the our our bills is minuscule compared to the money that we bring in now but even we did it the same way when we first started this journey many years ago when we wasn't making as much money was we only had like $50 each, you know, just as the, you know, 
penalty free money. And we did that for years. And all the money just went in and we invested, 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 invested. And then over time, that penalty free money has grown. Uh, but that's how we do it. And we we stick by it. Um, it's no more, you know, his money, her money. It's just. There we go. We we the decision that's made. And like I said, everything is almost automated for us. I mean, every, you know, besides the penalty free money is nothing to even talk about besides that, because we already know where the money is going. It's going to investment. It's going to investment. I mean, we have an account set up for, you know, the big money. I mean, not big money things, but the things that we have to pay like every six months, like auto insurance or vehicle registration, you know, once in a year off things, we have an account uh, there for that, just to have money in there. So when it comes up, it's like, oh, okay, that stuff comes up. But besides that, it's this is going to investment. But the thing is, is everybody knows what's going on. I mean, I've seen, I've seen recently, I just had a friend, um, their uh, father passed and he handled everything. They were married for decades upon decades. He handled everything. And then when he passed, unfortunately, the wife didn't know anything of how anything operated. And that's a that's a sad that's a sad disheartening feeling when you gotta go through and try to figure out what exactly was going on. He had he was very complicated with what how you know his investment strategies, his account financing and different things like that. So she had to learn it all from scratch or the kids had to step in to, to figure it out. And I don't ever want that to happen. So me we like like my family you know, you hear that word and you said it earlier, you said it earlier when you said, you know, people talking about money, people, most people are raised, oh, you don't talk about finances and you, you know, the first date, no, we talking about finances. That's, that's numero uno for me. Uh, but that's, that's the thing that people don't want to, don't want to do in my house. Finance is the topic we talk about majority of the time. Like it's casual conversation in our house to talk about finances. It's not even it ain't no okay we got to sit down we got to talk about finances i mean it's i love you uh where the money at where the money going i mean that's just that's that's how casual it is like i could walk in there now and start talking about finances and that's majority of our conversation and it's not you know eyebrow beating saying hey what are you doing here what are you doing there it's just hey talking about where money's going where do we need to allocate capital different things like that where we need to invest we talk about stocks and Everything up under the sun, because the one thing I don't want to happen is to have a reinvent of what the event that I just told you about, about the uh, friend that I've passed, is something happens to me and my wife don't know what's going on. Because the crazy part of it is there's nobody else that's in my sphere of people besides you that can help her understand what's going on. So I want her to know what's what. uh how this whole process actually works and everything that's going on. Cause I don't want her to be blindsided by nothing. And I see people get set up in that situation a lot because one person handles all the finances or they got separate accounts. And next thing you know, they ran up $20,000 in credit cards. Um, I, I seen one, uh, DI talks financial piece where he said, I got a divorce. And then I found out that, uh, my wife had 80,000 credit card debt. They got put on me. So you see what I'm saying? So that right there, that financial conversation, the combining of finances is paramount to a relationship to get out of the top reason that people get divorced in America. Sorry, I ran on a lot. Alex, oh, but go ahead. So I will correct myself a little bit. So the the smaller bills, just to get them out the way, so I'm not like, like okay, how many bills do I have to pay? I pay those as soon as they come, pretty much. Um, but like the bigger bills, maybe this is just like, my father's Jewish side, but I hold on to that money because I know I get interest per day and then I'll pay it at the end of the month. So right. like so I do that and then um but yeah and then I like there was there was so what you were saying about like penalty free money I'm laughing because we didn't have that for like years like it was just like no everything <laughs> investing <laughs> so so like I remember this was was this yeah this was last year when we went to Colombia so this was like about a month before and my wife was like and mind you my wife had no idea how much she even made because I had like 
46 percent of her income going straight to 401k and then whatever it was <laughs> so then whatever it was left was like roth ira and it, it was like so she like she had no idea and then she was like looking at it she's like i don't think we can afford this and like it had been like six years since she saw her father and she was like about she was about to cry and i was like we can afford it. I was like, I was like, let's do this. I was like, I talked to Kirby. He said, cause like, that was when I wanted to start getting into real estate. I was like, let's free up our income from how much we're putting into 401k. So we can use that towards real estate. I was like, and then we'll just, right. some, I was like, we'll use some of the income to um, go to Columbia. And I was like, and then going forward, just have some money so you can spend and then, like, the first paycheck after, like, that was adjusted, she was like, I didn't know I made this much. I was like, <laughs> like you know, it was so bad. Yeah, so, like, now we're finally, like, okay, wait, she has penalty-free money. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> Good God, Alex. You're running a tight ship over there. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's, like, it's like a jail cell. <laughs> Yeah, you're running a tight ship over there. Yeah, no, I mean, the thing is, like, my, my wife, like, we get the premium free money, my wife still be trying to find ways to save it. She, she's, yeah. she's like Alex 100%. And, uh, but yeah, no, it's just, it's, it's just, it's, it's crazy. And for me, it's, I mean, I hear it all the time. I mean, I hear friends when we go, you know, to friends' houses and things like that, relatives' houses, and they say, yeah, this is her money. And she, no, you, no, it's y'all money. Because, if she's short, who gonna pay? Who gonna come in and pay? You gonna say, "Oh no, that's your debt. I ain't got nothing to do with it." No, right? You gotta come. So you might as well. I mean, and it it makes things simpler, easier. It makes people it gets everybody on the same page, and being on the same page that's a key. Um, but yeah, it's it's a different it's a different animal out there, and I I see it all the time, and it, and like I said, I literally cringe every time I hear it, because. Like, I used to be that guy, and I realized if I stay that guy, uh, how far how far I was just going to the hole. I mean, I was a guy that was you know high in credit card debt, and I was running up credit cards and stuff like that. And now I refuse to have a balance on there at all. So it's just like uh, I'm like no, and then so like like you like you said with your like you said with your wife when you I mean before y'all got married and you're like hey, credit card debt was <laughs> like I go I do that all the time like my wife she'll you know she swipe her card for stuff and then with our our cards that you can pay it like right then right then and there I just be on there like mm, pay it <laughs> I mean I I mean she she'd be like you oh well I can get more interest there I got time to pay that so I can hold it and get more I'm like nope pay it pay it pay it because I mean for me it's 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 I rather I don't even want to get close to all right yeah I'm gonna pay it on the last day and then I forget the next thing you know all late payment no I'm mm -mm, no yeah not me I'm no, I I'm not gonna it. die I think I've just like it's become like second hand for me that I just I just know I got to pay bills like okay now it's the thirtieth I got to pay so like um but I will say like the more like business debt that's like or business bills not that business bills that's a that's like a newer one for me and i'm starting to realize like okay now i know why kirby does automatic payments because there's a lot of them as you know the more that come in so and and, that, and i do that just to that's that's the headache and a half i'll be like like i even like even the the you know cable phone whatever for the business it's on auto pay but the thing is they send me the bill and then so I go in there, like the auto pay is for whatever day they're supposed to take it out. And I pay it before the auto pay even kicks me in. Like, <laughs> here you go, just in case y'all mess up and <laughs> don't hit me with auto pay. They ain't going to say, oh, I was late. Nope. Here you go. Boom. There you go. But yeah, so they shouldn't send me the bill. Just, if, if they want me to wait to the 15th, then they should just not send me the bill. And I'll, it'll work. But uh, I can't I can't do it. And I mean, and, and part of that reason was, like I said, I was... I was so much in debt and I was just worried about how I'm going to do it, how I'm going to do it, how I'm going to do it. Now that I can pay it, I'm just like, nope, here, take your money, take your money, take your money. And um, and it just, just a headache that, I mean, not even a headache, it's just something that I don't have to deal with moving forward. Right, all right, makes sense. Well, guys, with all that being said, if you liked the video, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video.